so, what are you willing to pay for your deepest desire? Everyone is looking for something, or so says the band Eurythmics. For some people, it's wealth and being able to afford just about anything they want. Others want fame and have their names placed among the most popular people in the world. Then you have those who are after something much more personal, which are meant for them and them alone. Hi, hello, and welcome again everybody to another episode of Natural Juan. This time around, we're going to discuss another of Stephen King's long novels, Needful Things. But before we begin proper, if you've enjoyed my content so far, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. Also, here's a quick shout out to Jonathan Green, my patron and Patreon. If you would also like to support my channel, Please feel free to check out the description below with my Patreon information along with a PayPal account where you can make a quick and easy donation. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get inside the infamous store Needful Things and let the buyer beware. The story of Stephen King's Needful Things revolves around the ideas posited at the start of this video, discussing how the worst of humanity often comes out when their greatest desires are offered to them, to the point that some people are all too willing to sell their very souls just to get a few fleeting moments with the object of their desire. However, the book also expounds on the fact that sometimes the things we want the most don't turn out to be what we thought they were, and that our excessive desire often just leads to disappointment and regret. For those who have come this far, I'll warn you that there will definitely be spoilers ahead, so continue listening at your own risk. While certainly not the protagonist, the story begins with the arrival of a man named Leland Gaunt, played by the late Max von Sydow in the film, to the small and secluded town of Castle Rock. Being built on an island, it is often a chore to reach Castle Rock and is effectively shut off from the outside world in the event of a storm. This becomes an important point later on as it becomes apparent just what kind of horror is in store for the people that populate the secluded town. At first, it begins simple enough with Leland Gaunt offering a young boy a baseball card featuring a player he's always liked and admired. The boy admits that he doesn't have enough money to actually buy the baseball card but Mr. Gaunt makes him an offer he can't refuse. The boy may take the baseball card on credit and in exchange, he must do Mr. Gaunt a few favors. This is how the story slowly unfolds with Mr. Gaunt meeting and making the same offer to various townsfolk of Castle Rock. He offers to sell them various small items that are the objects of their dreams. Some are seemingly so powerful and memorable that they even cast a kind of illusion on the people who choose to take them out of needful things. The name of Mr. Gaunt's shop. However, not a single one of them are aware that their products aren't what they appear to be, and there are those who discover, much to their horror, that there is something monstrous in their items. Cue the arrival of Sheriff Alan Pangborn, played by actor Ed Harris in the movie, to the shop. Note that he is an otherwise ordinary man who has taken severe losses in his life. This of course refers to the death of his wife and child in a vehicular accident that, unsurprisingly, haunts him to this very day. He has come to Castle Rock to work as a law enforcer and bring order and safety to the townspeople. He comes to inspect the shop out of a sense of duty and a bit of mild curiosity. However, when Leland Gaunt decides to make offers of various kinds to the sheriff, he turns them down politely. It isn't because he doesn't like what is being offered to him, but it is because, after the death of his family, he realizes that there are more important things in life than small trinkets or even fame and fortune. So. After the loss of his family, he knows that the best things in life are best celebrated with the people you love, rather than just having them alone. After making sure that Needful Things is a legitimate business and finding nothing suspicious about Mr. Gaunt, at least at first, Sheriff Alan Pangborn leaves. And so, Leland Gaunt continues his business, handing out some of his items on credit and the people being required to pay back in the form of favors. Among those who buy from him include Polly, who also happens to be Sheriff Pangborn's love interest. Initially, many of the favors asked by Mr. Gaunt seem like harmless pranks. Some are even quite funny. 
However, as time goes on, the pranks become more and more serious and harmful to the townsfolk. It gets to the point that some people end up killing each other over petty pranks perpetrated by other townsfolk that have been manipulated by Mr. Gaunt. As the story progresses, things continue to deteriorate in Castle Rock after a storm isolates the island from the outside world. Soon it becomes a kill or be kill situation on the island, with many citizens of Castle Rock resorting to armed conflict. Even Sheriff Pangborn, in a moment of weakness, gives in partially to Mr. Gaunt's manipulation. Soon, the remaining sane and righteous people of the town must find the courage to fight their own obsessions before they can band together to fight Leland Gaunt and end the evil of needful things. A curious thing I found in this novel is that, while it doesn't seem connected to other Stephen King novels like The Dark Tower, It, or The Stand, some of its core elements are indeed there. It makes you kind of wonder if Mr. Gaunt might just be another of Randall Flagg's guises, or if he might be an agent of the Crimson King. Heck, even in the film proper, he's even implied to be the devil himself. Looking back on the book now, I can't help but notice how the book feels a lot like a critique on people's expectations and obsessions. There are people who spend a lot of their time and money obsessing over one object or another, but then, at the end, realize that it wasn't really worth it. They come to see by the end that the things they almost killed each other over wasn't worth it at all. I find that kind of thing happens all too often in real life and that people end up in a bad position because of pursuing their obsessions rather than what's right. Obsessions can take on many forms and, to a talented manipulator like Leland Gaunt, it becomes an easy way to control people. Obsessions can be more than just things or people. They can also be hatred towards a person or group of persons or an unhealthy curiosity. What's worse is that. In Needful Things, it is shown that obsessions are also often illusions, and once we have them, it is not at all what we realized it would be. Having the coolest and fastest car in the world will mean nothing if it can't take you where you want to go. Having a nice gadget is essentially worthless when it won't work when you need it. And having something to numb your pain will amount to nothing if it numbs all your other emotions as well. You can also use this idea for your own tabletop RPG games if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, a devil or fiend that sells magical items that aren't so powerful after all to unsuspecting players or NPCs. For a more futuristic campaign, how about a crime syndicate that offers seemingly top-of-the-line products? that turn out to be just the result of really good mimicry or holograms. Or perhaps a former adventurer who becomes a noble or monarch realizes just how lonely and unhappy it is to be at the top of things. Anyway, I hope you liked this quick review of Stephen King's Needful Things. While there were indeed spoilers in this video, I tried to keep most of it hidden, so as not to really ruin anything for readers. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. Again, if you'd like to support my channel and my activities, you'll find my Patreon information in the description below. And if you'd rather just make a quick and easy donation, there's a PayPal account there just for that purpose. So see you all in the next video.